Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this thin film slash soap looking material uh, using Cinema 4D and Redshift. Now I'm going to jump straight into the video, but before I do, I just want to quickly mention that you can download the material for this project. Um, it's on my Gumroad page, it's £2. Of course you don't have to, I'm going to run through it in this video. But if you don't want to watch the video and you just wanted to download the material, um, it's there to download. I'll put a link in the description. Any support is greatly appreciated. Um, it's only two quid, so yeah, power is in your hands. It's there to download if you feel like supporting me. Uh, so I'm going to stop waffling and just jump straight into the video. So we've got the project file here. Um, it's fairly simple. It's got HDR for the main lighting and then another light for these front reflections. Um, for the sake of building this material from scratch, I'm just going to disable the background, take the saturation out, um, and yeah, leave the rest as it is. So I'm going to create a new material, so I'm going to create redshift material and material, and just apply this to our sphere. Uh, I'm just going to turn off some of these settings quickly. Uh, there we go, and maybe just disable the reflection because it's pretty bright. So this is our standard material from the get-go. So it's just a fairly simple gray material. Um, okay, so we've got our gray material, uh, nothing special going on at the moment, but the main thing that we're gonna use to drive this material is something called a Fresnel. So I'm gonna type in Shift C, oh sorry, I'm gonna press Shift C and type in Fresnel. And I'm just gonna connect this straight to the surface just so I can explain how this works. So a Fresnel is basically going to give you uh, a range of values from white to black um, based on the angle that you're looking at the object. So we're looking at a sphere, it's a, a fairly simple object and what we're receiving right now is this kind of black inner and as you go to the outside of the sphere it turns white and that's based on the angle that the camera is looking at the object. So by default you have an IOR of 1.4. So if I was to reduce this value, um, it's gonna get more specific about how it interprets those black and white values based on the angle you're looking at the object. So if I reduce it down to like 1.2, you can see now there's much more contrast in the fall off. So now we've got this pitch black area in the middle and it doesn't spread that far. Uh, if I was to bring this down to 1.015, uh, you can see that now we're just getting this tiny white outline. On the flip side, if I was to increase this slider all the way up to 2, well, we're now just getting a solid white colour. So you're probably thinking, how can we use this? So if I was to, for example, bring this down to like 1.1, something like this, and use this to drive the reflection colour, and then plug that in the surface, you can now see how we're cutting off the amount of reflections this material is showing. So now we've just got this white reflection on the outside. If I was to disable this for now, you can see that's what the standard material looks like. We're getting all these reflections in the middle. So we can use this for now to drive how much reflection we're seeing in an object. And if I was to crank this back up, you can see how we're starting to reveal more of these reflections that we initially had. Um, so this is a really powerful node that you can use to kind of adjust the way reflections are seen by your material. So I'm going to set this at 1.4, which is the standard, the default that the Fresnel comes in. Um, and also, if you didn't want to use the IOR, you can actually untick the setting here, use, use index of refraction. And you can kind of just have like a, a number instead. So that's cool, but I'm going to leave it at the default, 1.4. Uh, yeah, but you can use that if you didn't want to use the refraction. So I'm actually just going to reduce this. I want it to have a more contrasting uh, result. And we can also use this thing called the extin extinction coefficient. And that's going to kind of just bring that fall off back in. But you can use this to create like a middle point between having quite a contrasty uh, reflection and then just kind of helping to tone it in just a little bit. So you can find like a nice middle point uh, and that way we've got a more contrasty middle so that's completely black but it just softens that fall off. So I'm going to leave that like it is for now. I think we've got a nice um, look going on there and if I was to plug the material back into the surface 
you can see we've got a nice shiny outside but it does start to creep some of these reflections in here so that's looking good so at the moment um, nothing special going on but what we're actually going to use is one of the presets so we're going to go up to preset and select water straight off the bat that's going to give us a water material uh, there's a few things that we're going to change to this uh, because as you can tell that looks nothing like the original example and we're going to start by ticking thin walled um, a bubble material like thin film is usually fairly thin so it makes sense to have that enabled uh, we're also going to come up to the roughness of our reflection and maybe put that as 0 0.2 just to kind of smooth it out a little bit and you can see just by smoothing it out we're starting to introduce some of the dispersion there which already injects some of the color into that bubble okay cool so we've got a fairly simple looking material at the moment but what we're going to do next is going to help to bring it to life quite a lot so we're going to type oh sorry we're going to press shift c and type in ramp and we can use this to recolor the for now so at the moment uh we're getting we're getting a reflection color of just black and white but we want to bring some more color into this material so we're going to plug the for now into the ramp and select input and then put that into the reflection color nothing's happened at the moment because we've just got a simple black to white gradient now I did some research on this um, on like thin film material in general came across this really cool website which basically breaks down the science of everything uh, how a thin film works um, according to a bunch of different factors um, it was really detailed I kind of skimmed through a lot of it but I came to this gradient down here which uh, is basically the gradient spectrum for thin film and oil slick uh, it also gives us the IOR values for the different kind of materials so for oil slick it's 1.44 and for water it's 1.33 now luckily we already know this because um, the preset gives us those values in the IOR uh, and the refraction the refraction uh, and the refraction is linked to the reflection so we're getting a 1.33 IOR on that as well um, but what was useful is that this gradient that it gives us and basically we can use this to drive the reflection color of our bubble material so I went through the effort of um, basically plugging that gradient into a ramp so I'm just going to copy that in uh, if it decides to work let's try again there we go so I basically rebuilt that gradient within cinema uh, I tweaked a few things here and there move positions around change the saturation of certain colors uh, but if we were to plug the front out into that gradient and then plug that into the reflection color you can see how we start to introduce more of those colors into our bubble material. I'm going to delete this ramp, we don't need it anymore. And this is starting to take some shape now. Uh, there's a few other things I did to improve this material and one of the things was adding coating. So if you've never used coating before, basically what it does is it adds a secondary reflection on top of your original reflection. So if I was to increase the weight to one, you can see now we're getting those reflections come back into our bubble material uh, but we're still keeping those really nice colors and shades from the original reflection so coating is a really powerful tool that you can use to basically add two different types of reflections to materials um, you can do this to drive some really interesting results as you can see from this material already um, but yeah I'm going to leave that at 1, maybe just add a tiny bit of roughness, maybe 0 0.2 just to soften it out a little bit. I made sure the IOR matched, so set that to 1.33. But I also took this same ramp and plugged it into the coating colour. So now we're getting those colourful reflections come back in. And what I also did was plugged it into the transmittance. So if I was to set this transmittance to black, it's basically going to take off that original coating we had. Um, so it kind of works how we've used the for now to drive the reflection. So what we're going to do is just take the ramp and plug that into the coat transmittance as well. Okay, at the moment I think this coating is a little bit too rough, so I'm just going to put that back down to 0 0.1. And we're getting somewhere close to the look that I want. The only thing that's uh, worrying me a bit at the moment is that the colors are super vibrant. If we look at the one I built in the example, 
you can see it's a lot more desaturated and we're getting a nicer range of colors in there as well as getting these nice reflections in the middle so how do we go about doing that uh, well what I did was I pressed shift C and I grabbed a color correct node uh, if you've never used this before it kind of does what it says on the tin you can use it to do some color correction to your material so I plugged this into the input and for the moment we're just going to focus on the reflection color so so what I did with this is I just took down the saturation to 0 0.5 and I pretty much left that at that. Now that doesn't make too much of a difference but I'm going to duplicate this color correct and plug that into the input and that into the coat color and then I'm going to do it one more time and plug the ramp into the input of that and plug that into the transmittance. So what I did with the coat color was I brought the saturation back up to 1 but I also boosted the gamma to about 1.5. So that's just going to increase the brightness of that second coating and help to bring in some of the reflections here that we can see. I then went into the coat transmittance uh, color node here and I kind of did the same with this. So I bumped the level scale up to about 1.25, maybe about 1.3. And then I also boosted the gamma up to about 1.8 as well. So that's just helping to really add that shine to the edge of the material, um, just bringing it all together a bit more. Uh, I could probably take a bit of the saturation back into that, so maybe 0 0.9, just help bring a bit more color in. Okay, cool, so this is all looking pretty good. I think the main thing we can do to just kind of add the final polish to this is just fix up the for now uh, and play with these settings a little bit. So I'm gonna try reduce this just to kind of bring some more of the reflection back in. Uh, so maybe around 1.7 and then maybe bump up the extinction extinction coefficient maybe about 0 0.4 so I'm going to put 0 0.75 uh, 0 0.3 and that's pretty much how I set up this thin film material so if I was to just turn everything back on we now get a really cool thin film material and you can use this for like all sorts of different things I applied it to this Taurus donut looking thing here and animated it and you get some really interesting results with the different colored refractions and reflections but it's a fairly simple setup all in all um, just using the coating and a for now um, and just tweaking the colors slightly with this gradient here and you get some really interesting results but like I said at the beginning of the video if you want to download the project file and help me keep making content like this and help support me as a creator uh, I would really appreciate it and hopefully you guys found this video helpful if you did leave a thumbs up hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content and hit the notification bell so you know when i next upload all right thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you in the next video peace